Hey friend, welcome. I'm so excited to have you here listening to another episode of the Pattern Design Circle podcast. Here we talk all about the ins and outs of designing knit and crochet patterns and running a business that makes it all possible. I'm Jessica, your host, knitting pattern designer, design mentor, and the friend in your ear. Can't wait to dive right in. The Pattern Design Circle podcast is sponsored by the Pattern Design Circle a membership community for knit and crochet pattern designers that are feeling lost, lonely, or frustrated in their business. It connects you with a supportive community that's always eager to answer your questions and help you through the hard times. And there's loads of resources and activities specifically catered to business and designing. Sound like your jam? Check it out at snickerdoodleknits.com forward slash design dash circle. That's snickerdoodle like the cookie, knits, K-N-I-T-S dot com forward slash design dash circle. All right, let's get into it. Hello and welcome to another episode of Pattern Design Circle podcast. I'm so excited to be here in your ear again and with a guest this time. So I have the designer behind Knitting with Chopsticks. (laughs) We were just talking about how to pronounce her name and I... I'm going to totally butcher it. So can you pronounce your name for us as well? So it's Hortense. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> so we just connected in the last few months um, because you are hosting a summit at the beginning of February and you asked me to be one of the designers teaching a class. Uh, so I thought it'd be fun to have you here on the podcast share a bit about your business um kind of how you got into it what you're doing and then about a summit um we I think we see it lots and lots of summits in the larger business world and we haven't seen as many in our our little knitting and crocheting piece of that world <laughs> uh, so I'm not sure how many folks listening are actually familiar so we'll we'll dive into more what summits are and things like that but uh, you started your business in 2018, which was actually the same year I started mine. So I started as an Etsy shop selling the hand knit, hand knit items in October of 2018. And you started in December. Great minds think alike. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> um, but I feel like the way that you started is a little unique for designers. Uh, so yes. you want to share a little bit about why and how you you actually got started sure um so i didn't get started by selling my own hand knits um, <laughs> like most of us do uh, <laughs> i was living in malaysia so there was no like it's tropical there is no need for hats so like selling my handmade items uh and even like selling on etsy and then shipping internationally like there was no way that that was going to work to like start out or like i wouldn't recommend it um So I went straight for patterns. Um, I actually started because I was just like reading a blog um, and I just read like how Sorella was like making her own business out of um, making patterns. And my husband just looked over my shoulder and he was like, but Hortense, you do just the same. You just have to put it online. Like, yeah, that's so easy. Just put it online. (laughs) Um, But that sort of like started the idea. um, And we were living in Malaysia, so we had no family, no friends. Uh, we made friends there, but uh, we had a lot of time. No kids also back then. Um, so I was like, okay, why not? Let's let's try it for fun. Like, I like what I do and I like sharing. So let's see what this could become. Um, the idea had never been to make a business out of it and definitely not my full-time job, but it happened. <laughs> um, so I was very... Um, I'm very anti-social media. Uh, I've never been on Facebook or Instagram or anything before starting my blog. I still don't like it. Um, I still have friends like making fun of me because they see me on Facebook all the time now. Um, (laughs) I still don't have a personal like anything, but anyway. Um, So I was like, it has to look professional. Even if it's not the purpose to be a job, it has to look as if. And that sort of made it happen, kind of. Um, So that's how I started. Uh, I make knitting and crochet patterns, um, mostly for beginners to like easy intermediate level, um, nothing fancy here, and mostly woman garments, baby garments, and blankets. Yes. And so how did you kind of choose 
what you you design? Oh, I just make what I want to make and then make a pattern and put it on. <laughs> yeah. There's not there's not that much strategy. Like I try to be more strategic the last few years, but I realized that the patterns that do the best are the ones that I just want to make because I want to make them, even if it's winter and it's like a summer dress or like it doesn't make sense. Um, because when you're passionate about it and you're making it like for yourself, it kind of turns out better. You frog it a few more times. I don't know. Yeah. So I I just this year I decided to lean into my like natural tendencies. So I just gave up on trying to make more accessories. I should make more hats, but I don't want to make hats. So I'm just not gonna try. Yes, yes. And I think there's there's the aspect that you mentioned of when you're passionate about things, people know it and then they get excited about it too. There's also the aspect of if you're making things just because you think other people are going to buy them, I think that leads to more burnout and hating what you do. <laughs> That's not the plan. No one should do this and hate it. <laughs> exactly. Yes, yes. Um, so you mentioned that you do both knit and crochet. And you had mentioned to me earlier that you you felt like it's maybe a little swapped from what a lot of people yeah. have done in crochet. It made total sense in my mind, but go ahead and explain what you do. <laughs> so usually uh, people will, I think, will tend to crochet for winter because crochet items get bulkier, like the fab, like you name the same yarn weight and you get a bulkier fabric. So like logically, it's more wintry. But somehow in my head, crochet goes with summer and knitting goes with winter. And I have a really hard time to like force myself to keep <laughs> making patterns for both crafts at both seasons. So now I just like publish winter items in the summer. So I have knitting patterns in the summer. Yes. I It makes sense in my head because I associate crochet with more open fabric. Like I, I'm not a crocheter. Mm. So this is, you yeah, know, maybe. From it's <laughs> very... <laughs> it's much easier to do lace in crochet than in knitting. Mm -hmm. So I picture, you know, like a beach bag or, you know, like, I don't know, like I, I, when I think of like things that I would crochet, I think I think more of like accessories or things that aren't actually garments. And so then to me, it's like, oh, that makes sense for the summer. <laughs> crochet is also because it's a thicker fabric, it's easier to make things that are stiffer. So it's easier to make like 3D objects. Yeah. Um, so that's convenient too. Yeah, the main thing I've wanted to learn crochet for is like for the baskets and things like that. Like, of course. <laughs> that's good because that's the super easy things. <laughs> so yeah, perfect. You can do it. Great. All right. So you so you kind of started with with blogging and designing, and now kind of where where has this path brought you? Now, what what, what um, has the last several years looked like? <laughs> So I'm still making patterns. Um, so I started with patterns. I started just putting them on my blog and then I had people requesting a PDF. So I was like, but it's free on my blog. Why do you want a PDF? But apparently that's a thing. So I discovered that. Um, I had been very like isolated in my knitting uh, before starting a blog. So I was not like following anyone online or anything. So I had no idea. Um, so I was like, okay, you want a PDF and you want to pay for it? Fine. Like, <laughs> I won't say no. So I started like selling my PDF patterns and having them free on my website. Um, that's still like my main business model. Um, and then on top of that, I started um, finding that originally I wanted to make my patterns um, easier to understand for everyone who doesn't know how to read patterns. But then I discovered that people who do read patterns got frustrated that my patterns were like following the standards. Um, so I decided to switch and to go into like teaching people how to read the patterns and then making normal patterns, mm -hmm. uh, which is probably more logic. Um, so I did launch a course about reading patterns uh, and I have a few eBooks and things like that. Um, and then I realized that that was not enough. Um, so I really want people to take my patterns and like make them make it their own. Um, like, I'm super happy if I see someone make my sweater and it turns out just the same. But I'm a little bit sad because I'm like, where are you in this project? Like, um, so even just like picking their own colors or like any adjustments, uh, like adding color work or stripes, removing stripes, any like it doesn't have to be like a whole like different sleeve shape. But it makes me happy when people change things. 
um some people just like message me like i hope you're not offended but i changed this i still wanted to share i'm like i'm never offended if you're changing anything like that's that's the point it's just a basis of inspiration and a basis uh so you don't have to work out all the math uh, and all the things but like to start from and then make it whatever you want yeah um but in order to be able to do that you either need to do a lot of trial and error like most of us probably did or you need more know-how and like yarn knowledge i call it um i don't know the proper terms but and that's really hard to share just through a blog and newsletters um so i wanted to do something else and then i followed a business summit and i was like ooh that's a good idea i need to do something like that but like teaching knitting and crochet so i did a crochet summit in september and it was awesome so now i'm doing a knitting one <laughs> yes yes perfect all right we'll come back to the summit i wanted to talk about two things that you mentioned uh first of all was the you know having free patterns and people wanting the pdfs uh i have free patterns that are used as freebies lead magnets for people to join my email list but i also have them available as paid patterns on all the selling channels so ravelry and etsy and all the places um but i put in my listings i'm like hey this is available for free if you want it for free you can join the email list if you want to pay for it you can pay for it and it like shocks me not in i mean it doesn't shock me as much anymore but at the beginning it's totally shocked me how many people still are willing to pay for the pattern um even though oh. it's available for free <laughs> So probably a lot of people missed your notes, uh, but also a lot of people just want to support the designers and the designs they like. And they're like, I'm going to make it. So I want to pay for it so that I'm sure that the designer can make more designs, basically. Yes. There are some nice people out there. Absolutely. And I love that. And I, and so that's something that I guess I was bringing up to remind designers listening. That, um, yes, there's free patterns. Yes, you can offer your patterns for free, but there are still crafters who who really want to pay you for your, what you're making as well yeah, and i found that like because now i have a few patterns that are only paid because like i work with hobby and that's the only way to do it anyway um i found it very helpful to have the free one because then people can see and like they see the construction they see how it's written and they're like okay it's like i will be able to do this then i grab the pdf um and you can explain it in like the longest descriptions but just like actually seeing the pattern uh, we'll just make them do it. And then, of course, like I have ads on my website, which are a lot, I admit, because that's how it is. Uh, yeah. And some people don't mind and want to be on the website with the ads and some people want the PDF. And a few people complain and I don't care about those because they're not my people. Um, but in the end, like one way or the other, they're free, but they're not free because you're still like paying me through watching my ads. So Yes, yes. And that's, you know, that's where everyone has a different business model. And so you're, you're, it's not that you're just throwing everything out for free and not getting paid back for, for your time and your effort. <laughs> Trust me. <no>. Yes. <laughs> uh, and, and even if, if someone wants to do that and doesn't want to like make money out of their knitting patterns, that's fine too. Like everyone just has to do whatever they feel comfortable. I know some people have a really, really hard time with the fact of putting patterns out for free. Um, others like me find it very obvious and easy, much easier to market and much easier to actually make money with free patterns than with paid patterns. So whatever you feel comfortable, that's what you have to do. Yeah, yes. Um, oh, there was one other thing. But anyway, let's go ahead and hop into the summit. I don't remember what the other quote they was. <laughs> um, so a summit really is like when usually several different people come together and share a whole lot of knowledge in a short amount of time for free. Um, it's, it's really just a whole lot of resources and education and learning all packed into a day or a few days. So the, the summit that you're hosting for knitting is Knit Your Wardrobe uh, Summit and hosts it be officially begins February 1st. So like the actual content, the classes begin February 1st, runs through February 4th. Uh, so you have 17 designers. Yeah. Um, and so 
there's there's different classes that release each day and they are available for 48 hours. Uh, since we were talking about how to make money from <laughs> from free things, <laughs> um, it's not it, some it's any anything free in the business world, pretty much, uh, you know, businesses in order to actually make income, you have to bring money in. <laughs> so uh, some it's often have additional things that you can purchase. So, for example, the Knit Your Wardrobe Summit is, there's the All Access Pass, um, which has, you get availability to all of the content beyond the summit. Uh, so beyond the 48 hours. So you get, then you have access to all of the courses. Plus you get access to the... You get lesson notes. So yeah. for each course you have, you get access to the video, but you also get like a written support. Um, it's either the slides, if they're quite extensive, or like a PDF uh, or Word document with like basically all the content of the video. So you can like print out, take notes, refer to. Um, I hate like scrolling through videos when you... Like when you remember in this video, there was something and I don't know the, the thing anymore. Uh, having to look it up in a video is painful. So you have like a written support for that. Yes. Yes. And then there's also the super pack, which has a whole lot more stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the one you want. <laughs> it has the all access pass. And then it also has a live sip and stitch events and uh, a whole bunch of bonuses. So like patterns and ebooks and things like that uh courses and i have so i i included two my i guess i only have two <laughs> right now <laughs> two garment patterns uh because they're perfect ways to apply the, the information from the course that i'm teaching the class that i'm teaching um but yeah there's like four hundred dollars worth practice. yes over four hundred <laughs> of of bonuses there and then there's something else in the super back that i'm not remembering that's um a month of my membership yes yes <laughs> <laughs> sorry that that was an important one <laughs> <laughs> so like i have a, a membership it's uh like for knitters and crocheters uh who are well, I guess beginner intermediate and just want to have people to hang out with um, to ask questions. We have a monthly workshop, um, which is about 45 minutes an hour on like different knitting crochet topics. Um, and then we have sip and stitch parties just to mingle and they get my patterns. of course. Yes. Yes. So how long have you had the membership? Um, so I actually just started recently um, after the first summit. I was like, this is awesome. That's what we need, but this is three days. I need something like that's slower paced because it's very intensive <laughs> the summit, but that's like kind of the same. Um, so I really took my summit model and I just like spread it out over the year basically. And having like, instead of five presentation a day, I have one a month. Um, they're either by me or I have some guest speakers coming to the membership too. And then you have my patterns, uh, you have the sip and stitches just like in the summit. Um, so it's really this community and this exchange of yarn knowledge that I'm trying to foster in the membership. Yes, I love that. Are you, a, I mean, you must be enjoying it if you're continuing to promote it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun and it's really nice to, um, or like I've, as I said, I'm not very social media-ish. So I've been doing this more like on my own and then like a lot of numbers and greedy like meet the people behind it and like really connect and exchange, you know, like little tips and tricks and like day-to-day -day knitting and crochet. Um, I don't have many people in my life that are knitting and crocheting. So it's nice to have like once a month, you just sit down, have a drink and stitch and just like exchange. Like, I don't know, my best friend just asked me to knit something in black yarn and everyone directly knows why I'm saying that and what it means. If I say that to my family, they're like, yeah, whatever, it's black. Okay, you don't like black, but who cares? So it's nice to have like people who get it. You know? mm -hmm. Yes, that's so fun. I, yeah, I really love having, you know, those communities as well, where you, you actually feel like you get to know people better. Like social media, you kind of get to know the people who are sharing themselves a lot. And that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's also like social media is like, watch me. Mm -hmm. while having like a membership it's more like 
okay, I'm hosting, I'm organizing, but it's not like about me as a person or like my life or my knitting. It's about everyone's. And like, if I can teach and share anything I know, I'm happy to do so. But I also want other people to like, I've learned things uh, through our events and through our um, like Facebook group and so on. Um, so it's like a win-win for everyone. Yes. Yes. I love that. So um, I'm curious if you're comfortable sharing like where your traffic tends to come from. Mainly the reason I'm going this direction is because so many designers feel like they have to spend a lot of time on social media because that's where they're used to seeing other people. And yeah. SEO, search engine optimization, is such an incredible tool. So where where does your traffic tend to come from? So the only reason I'm doing social media is to be able to show brands that I do have a social media <laughs> following because they cannot see my website traffic or my email list size, which is way more interesting than my social media. But uh, like to have yarn support and partnerships and things, if you don't have at least two, three thousand Instagram followers, it's going to be very hard. Um, so I basically grew it just for that and I keep it just for that. But my traffic is mostly my email list. So my email list is really from the start. I'm an email person. So I used to just email my friends instead of texting them. Um, I'm that weirdo. So email came very natural to me. So from the start, that was my focus. And honestly, it's the best thing you can do for your business. Um, so I send a lot of emails. I have a big email list and it's like really my central thing. Um, and then Google, Pinterest. Um, I was lucky that I started when Pinterest was easy um, and sort of had a few patterns go pretty well there. Um, so that helped. Um, now it's way harder. Um, I haven't figured out how to make it work since all the changes two years ago. One of my patterns is doing really well now, a new one, but I don't know why or I don't know how. Um, so I don't have any magic tricks for you there, but I keep trying. Uh, but even without being super good at Pinterest, uh, it still brings like regular traffic while uh, you post something on Facebook, you get a 20, 20 clicks and then the next day it's zero. Pinterest is going to be, if if something gets picked up a little bit, uh, like that one pattern I'm talking about, I'm getting more than 100 visits a day for like the last three, four months and I'm not posting anything or doing anything. It just keeps coming. Uh, so I like that way better. Yes, yes, I love, I love the, uh, oh, now I blanked on the word, but like the passive stream. Yeah, like, yeah uh, especially, I, I find it works especially well for, for growing email list, um, for bringing people into freebies and things like that, to the blog, things like that. Um, I haven't had as much luck with Pinterest with paid patterns, like just bringing them to Ravelry or something. Uh, but yeah, that's I, why I'm saying free patterns bring more money. <laughs> I haven't really, I don't think I've pinned anything new on Pinterest for a couple of years, but I still, you know, I still have people constantly coming in on the other pins and also to certain blog posts where I have affiliate links and I have like two blog posts that I did. I'm not a big blogger. I don't have a lot of blog posts, but I have like two blog posts from a couple of years ago that I had affiliate links in and I just continue to make monthly revenue. And it's like, this isn't bad. Nice. <laughs> I want to do more of that. <laughs> yeah. So my blog posts are mostly my patterns. Like I'm not mm -hmm. blogging, like talking, like not talking, but like writing um, much about other things. It's just like every pattern gets a blog post. Yes. Yeah. I'm not someone who's can like talk forever about her inspiration and the design. I'm like, I made a sweater. It's pretty. Voila. Make it. <laughs> make it. Don't make it. This is the yarn. This is the things. But I'm not good at. I I told it like the blah blah talk. It's very important and very good uh, and necessary, but I'm, I don't like it. Well, and that's why you know, like that's why it's so important to have business owners of different personalities because customers are that way too like some of us love to just talk about everything <laughs> some of us don't some of us like to be on social media some of us don't some of us like to record videos some of us like to write you know it's it's all these different forms of connecting and different personalities and all of the things and they're going to resonate differently with different audiences and so 
it's okay that we're not you have to lean into what you like most because yeah. then by default you're gonna be consistent and keep doing it which honestly online is the most important thing whatever you do just be consistent and keep doing it and that's definitely going to work better than like switching strategies and switching platforms all the time uh that's not going to get you anywhere and don't beat yourself up because you're not like somebody else who's doing something else completely different that you want to enjoy anyway <laughs> yeah you can enjoy them like i love watching like two of ones in attitude and their 150,000 followers that's never going to be me but i'm not going to make my coffee in front of everyone every morning my house is not like you can see my background my house is not instagrammable um we're basically living in my um with covid and just like moved in temporarily three years ago and never left so it's my not my decor um i don't have a white wall like at all in the whole house so instagram is kind of hard but i accept it <laughs> yes yes and if it's you know it's not something that you're you're wanting to do anyway then it's like no no sense moping about it <laughs> or or trying to you know spend a lot of time to figure out how to change it or anything like that so i love that all right let's get back to the summit before we wrap things up uh because we, we were talking about what summits are and all of that um what's your experience been like hosting uh it's really fun it's really intensive <laughs> yes um but i love I love organizing. I'm a very structured and organized person. So like since I started, I loved organizing different kinds of like collaborations and events. I'm all for like a rising boat lift old tide. No, a rising tide lift old boats. Sorry. Um, and like community over competition. Um, I definitely think there's room for everyone and for all the designers and all the designs. Um, so for me, that part is comes easy. Um, the behind the scenes, like, it basically takes three months of mostly full-time work to organize it, uh, to have everything set up so that it's converting the best it can. Like people, like all the tech is working, everything is uh, set up and people are like, all the promotion is done. Um, I try to make it easy for all the speakers and the affiliates so that they can share easily. Um, so all of that I actually enjoy doing. So that's pretty easy uh, and then the summit itself uh, for me is not so easy because you have to be live a lot um, which is not my natural uh, preference <laughs> I'm super happy to be there um, so that's very tiring but uh, it's so worth it honestly the knitting the crochet summit sorry um, you usually when you organize something you always have those people who complain that not everything is really free and that one little tech glitch and it's the end of the world and you're the worst monster because you're trying to steal them from whatever free thing they deserve to have uh, I did not get any of those complaints I only got like super happy people and so many people upgraded um, like it converted at 12% which is huge uh, for online anything um, and everyone like I'm still getting emails from people who were loved it and now they see the next summit they're like oh I got the previous one and I got the upgrade I'm not even thinking about it I get it I know it's going to be good uh, so that's really re rewarding um, I also love how it's summits are like a strat it's not just sales it's not just like increasing your email list it's not just increasing your connections with the industry it's everything together so it's a lot of work it's very intensive but it brings your business to the next level, like on all aspects, which is what I needed after maternity leave, basically. Yes, I love that. Um, and I just talking about like having other people, you know, the rising tide lifts all boats. What I really love about events like summits, I've been thinking about hosting one for designers for several sure. years. I haven't done it yet. Well, I guess a couple of years. Um, Go for but it. <laughs> Oh, I had other stuff on my plate and I, I was smart enough to know that I shouldn't add something else. But <laughs> um, uh, anyway, some what I really love is that, you know, like you're, you're coming together, you can kind of build a community with these other per people who are peers in the industry doing similar things. Uh, and they can kind of become a support system beyond the summit. And 
uh, you're reaching, everyone is reaching new audiences because everyone is involved in promoting it and sharing it with their audience. And it's just the, the number of And people that you reach is much greater than doing something on your own. <laughs> definitely and how I build it is I it's really important for me that it's like a win-win for everyone um, so obviously as a host I'm probably like growing the most but I'm also putting the most work um, but I try to build in as many ways as possible for my speakers to get the most out of it um, so they have their presentation they get to do a live Q&A so they get to really connect with the audience um, they can share a freebie so with an email sign up so that everyone who watches their presentation and likes whatever they have to say can sign up to their email list and is like incentivized to do it. Um, same with the super pack, they provide a bonus. Uh, people have to sign up for their bonus. So I'm not just giving everyone the patterns and you're not ever in touch with whoever downloads your pattern. They actually have to come and claim it from you so that you get in contact with them. And then of course, like people can unsubscribe and leave, but I'm trying to like put you in contact and then it's your job to convince them that they have to stay <laughs> um, <laughs> or that they want to stay <laughs> that they want to stay uh and then like of course if you're promoting uh the summit and the event you get a commission of course uh which i think is pretty generous compared to like standards uh, so like for me it's very important that everyone's winning um and happy like with the experience yes yes i love that so i feel like Uh, because this summit is about garments, um, if you're a designer listening and you don't feel like you're an excellent knitter when it comes to garments, super confident with all the things, I think this summit will have a lot of value for anyone who's interested in really kind of any technique expanding knowledge around garments. Um, there's, I mean, it's everything from picking up stitches to uh, blocking to the customized We have page, we have customizing pattern, like making a design based on an existing sweater. We have um, reading charts. So even like a lot of them are like not only for garments. So every presentation is like geared towards garment, like that topic in the context of garments. But even if you're not making garments or like making garment designs, I think you can still learn a lot. Um, honestly, I watched a few of the presentations and I learned so much. Um, admittedly, like I've never used a chart. I've never written a chart, like sim crazy symbols I stay away from. And now I'm like, I need to find an easy pattern to start using charts. Uh, they're so cool. Uh, <laughs> so there's a lot that you can still learn. Um, even if you're experienced, like it's meant for beginners, but everyone uh, learns stuff. yeah and i think the one that i'm most excited looking at is the one on bus starts because Yeah. i've knit a few garments but i haven't really done I'm, I'm not familiar with a lot of the customizations like i know like basic customizations for waist or hip or just you know bake make things bigger or smaller but not very specific to very Yeah. I make squares, you know, like everything I make is comfy, oversized square. Easy. yes Um, so it's very interesting to see like all the, um, she actually comes from like a sewing background. Um, so she really like her, her presentation is really amazing. Yeah, is that Jill that's teaching that? Yeah. Yeah, so very quick story time. Before I started designing, I was test knitting some and I test knit for, well, it was actually kind of like a sample slash test knit for Jill. So I made a couple of samples Awesome. <laughs> before That's I started funny. looking. So <laughs> yes. This is a big, small world. <laughs> yes, yes. It was fun to see her name on the list. Anyway, um, so if you're interested in learning anything about garments, all of the things, if you kind of just want to check out and see what a summit's like, um, we'd love to have you join us for Knit Your Wardrobe <laughs> Summit. Uh, you can join anytime now. It's live February 1st through 4th. The link is in the description. I do have an affiliate link. So if you do an upgrade, um, <laughs> I do get some commission. Uh, and there's also, if you have an audience who is interested in you think might be interested in joining the summit. Uh, we have a link down here so you can sign up as an affiliate. And I feel like there was something, another link.
Um, I think it's the one from Summit in a Box. So I'm following um, Krista Miller from Summit in a Box to help me make sure my summit is like as good as it can be and as good for everyone uh, without having to start from scratch. She has like an amazing course with like all the templates, all everything's built in. It makes it way easy. Um, so I just put the link there in case anyone's like interested in looking into a summit. She has like a free um, sort of like one week series um, to get you started thinking about hosting your summit. Um, and that's the link that's in there. Yes, so perfect. And um, I know I've seen that her product uh, promoted in several different places by several different people. So I, I feel very confident that it's probably a very good resource. <laughs> you want to do a summit? That's the piece. <laughs> yes, yes. I have another friend, different, completely different part of business, but she's she's been hosting summits lately too. So um, I think she was using the same the exact same program. <laughs> Hosting another summit in February? Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I just went live with her. She's also talking uh, at our summit, like at the Knit World Rope Summit, and I'm talking at her summit. So it's really funny. Oh, yes, <laughs> yeah. It's, oh, it's the... like knitting summit. Yeah, um, I'm also a designer there. But the person I was thinking of is, she's not in the knitter per se industry okay. at all. She's in parenting stuff, but anyway, okay. yes, but she is hosting a summit in February as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and she's probably in the, in the group. Uh... Yes. So anyway, check out all the links. Thank you so much for joining us, for giving us, I feel like we talked about so many different things, but giving us a big overview of uh, your business and kind of your journey from blogging and designing through summits and now a membership. Thank you. Thank you uh, for having me. Yeah. Do you have any like thing that you wish that you knew as a designer before or anything that you'd like to share with designers? Mm, no one knows everything. Yeah. Like, it might look like people know, but no one knows. No one has a clue what they're doing. <laughs> I love that. So, so just like go for it and don't wait to be like the expert to do it. Because people don't need experts. They just need people that are like one step ahead of them to show them how to do the next step. Yes, exactly. I love that. Thank you so much. And thanks for joining us. Hope Thank we you. see you on the summit, at the summit. All right. Sure. <laughs> Talk Thank <later>. you. <laughs> wow. Thanks so much for listening to this episode. If you found it valuable, please share the podcast with a designer friend. And if you have a minute, leave a review. It's so helpful for me and means the world to me. Chat soon.